Hey everybody, Jay here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a video I haven't done in over two years. The channel has had some serious growth since I first made this video, so I would remake it again. And that is pros and cons of an outdoor wood boiler. Now, those of you who may not know, maybe this is your first time, an outdoor wood boiler is basically a giant machine outside that heats up water and then that water is pumped into the house and you could tie it in various different ways to heat your homes. So we're gonna talk about pros and cons of owning one of these units. Uh, is it worth it? Do you like it? How much work is it? X, Y, Z. So without further ado, folks, happy February and let's get right into it. All right, folks, here we go. Um, I'm gonna try to keep this video under 10 minutes, so let's get right uh, into it. Um, pros and cons of an outdoor wood boiler. Um, the, I'm gonna start with the pros. The first pro is you're heating with wood. Wood is a renewable resource. Um, we live on an 18 acre homestead. There's six, six acres next to us that we're allowed to be on, and there's also another 20 acres we're allowed to be on. So whatever that math equals is boom, there's a lot of wood. It's all forest. So the natural forest, I'm not gonna go into a whole forestry subject on this, but wood is a renewable resources. As much as people don't want to admit it, it really is. Uh, wood is as common as trees, as uh, I think the saying goes. So you're using a renewable resource to heat your home versus oil, um, gas, whatever else it may be. So that is pro number one. You're using a renewable resources that literally I can throw a rock and hit a thousand trees in any direction. So that's number one. Um, number two for pros is your mess is outside. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually, um, bundle this in with safety and insurance. So having this machine outside, your fire is outside. This machine is about 60 feet from the house, give or take. It's closer to the deck, but the actual physical house, it's about 60 feet away. So as far as safety and your mess, all your ashes, your coals, if you have a chimney fire, it is all outside. If this machine just grew legs and walked and, and blew right off the ground, it wouldn't matter because it's not in the house. So that is a pro that the machine is outside, mess is outside. And as far as insurance goes, um, I know when we talk to our insurance, they graded it differently than if we had a conventional wood stove because this being outside, obviously there's a huge safety difference uh, and whatnot. So third thing, um, the, another pro, if you want to heat multiple buildings, um, if you want to heat, I know people, there's, I have a thousand, thousands of people who follow my channel who have wood boilers. I've seen everything from greenhouses, detached garages, shops, second homes. I've actually seen somebody heat two homes with an outdoor boiler, which is pretty, uh, significant. So if you want all your heat source in one place, an outdoor boiler would be for you to, um, heat multiple buildings. Like I said, greenhouses, garage, you name it, people have done it. Um, next, uh, a pro. I threw this in there. I think it's less time per day compared to a wood stove. Now, granted, I don't own a wood stove, so I don't know how long you can get a burn from it. But from what I've got from general feedback, I can load this. I can get a 24 hour burn out of this machine if I loaded it. If not, give or take maybe longer, depending on a bazillion different factors. So take this with a grain of salt. It's less time per day. I've heard wood stoves run maybe five, six hours. Uh, I've heard some of the smaller ones. I don't know. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that. So that is a pro. You are technically spending less time dealing with wood during the course of the day. I can feed this machine and walk away and come back 24 hours from now and still have a fighting chance of getting it running. Um, also another pro in owning an outdoor boiler is you are developing a skill. I know how to fell trees, buck trees, split firewood, process firewood, uh, limb trees, prune trees. That's a skill you learn with this. So as far as the world works and as far as having the way the world is going and people are trying to build communities and whatnot, having that skill to safely cut down a tree or cut down a tree that's hung up or process wood into firewood to be able to tell if it's seasoned or not and when it's ready, how to split it, that is a valuable skill. I could take all the knowledge and equipment I have and I could go technically, start a business, start a tree service uh, if I wanted to. So that is a pro, in my opinion. You get good at cutting wood, processing wood, you know, thinning the forest and all that stuff. You learn a lot when you heat with firewood. So that is a uh, pro. Um, another pro, again, some of these might be related, is your uh, one-stop shop. You're, you're not dealing with um, propane and this side of the house maybe oil on the other side or like i said if you have multiple buildings you got to worry about that furnace getting running you got to go over there and you got to get that oil to run it's one i think i grouped this maybe i'll group this in with the other one i'm not sure yet but it's pretty much one-stop shop um there's no multiple heat sources there's no 
multiple, I need gas or I need propane or this is natural gas and blah, blah, blah. It's all one wood, wood and go, load and go. That's it. You can plumb in different buildings, like I said earlier. Um, also, too, another pro is independence. Me, I don't have to call an oil or propane person. Nothing wrong with that job and that career. I know, actually, our propane guy. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, but I'm not depending on somebody else when the tank runs low or the uh, oil furnace shuts off because we're out of oil. The, this wood is dependent on me and my energy efforts alone. I'm not dependent on anybody. It's technically not taxable. I can cut down every tree we own if I really wanted to, which I'm not going to, but I'm not dependent on anybody else. It's all on me and I love that. That's definitely a pro. Um, another pro uh, is exercise, fitness, and I said mental toughness in quotes. Um, obviously heating with wood, it's a lot of work. Outdoor wood boilers, now the new ones are burning similar amounts of firewood than people with wood stoves, which is fascinating. They say the new machines, this is a dinosaur, this is a classic. They say the new machines are about 50% uh, efficient. So some, some people have heat their house with firewood, use about six cords to heat their home. I could probably heat my whole 3,000 square foot home with the new gasification one for probably the same amount of wood. So um, it's good exercise. You're out in the cold, you're out in, in, the, in the heat. I try to call my wood in the firewood, but it's just great exercise. There's nothing like splitting wood, being out in the woods with the, you know, the four wheeler, the tractor, the chainsaws. I love it. Um, definitely, definitely good mental, a mental break too. You get to be out in the woods, you see deer, you see you know coyotes. Um, there's just all types of stuff out there. Uh, I love it. So that's definitely a pro. Um, these machines are more efficient than, let's say, an open fireplace. I've seen some reviews say open flame fireplaces are like 40% efficient. Now, wood stoves, I've heard about 80% uh, percent efficient. And then the new gasification units are almost 90-something percent efficient. You're getting that maximum energy from that log. So as far as this, as far as pros go, the new, new fancy models are definitely, definitely more efficient than like an open fireplace. We'll say that. Compared to a wood stove, that's a whole nother video in itself. Um, the last pro I have, and then we'll move on to the cons, it's um, a bartering tool, trade. Um, having if having loads of firewood around that is a bartering tool if you you know maybe i don't know where society is going but if i have a cord of wood and somebody else has something i want and they need the heat and they have something i want you know maybe there's a trade-off there you know not everything is cash dependent so maybe there's a bartering tool there you know what i mean it's definitely a pro having firewood on hand um is definitely a pro especially when the cold months come knocking i've had people a few people actually ask me if i had any more firewood uh, for sale, which I don't, which is fascinating, which we'll address in the future. Um, oh, sorry, that wasn't my last one. My last pro is responsibility. I take responsibility for heating my home six months out of the year. That means I need to find time to obviously cut the wood, split the wood, get the wood, X, Y, Z. So it's a good responsibility to have. It's also, it's going to be a good responsibility for my kids to learn the value of hard work. I really think that I'm not going to get into the whole society thing, but where society is going in the next generation, I don't think kids want to get their hands dirty. And that's terrifying. And that should be terrifying. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. I don't know. But anyways, I will show my sons the responsibility. They will be, help, hopefully, God willing, helping me out in the woods when the time comes. They're still kids for now, so I'm going to let them be kids. But when um, manhood comes around, for sure, they'll definitely be helping out to learn the power of a little bit of responsibility so that uh let me check my list that is my last pro oh another thing oh no i kind of said this earlier one last thing um somebody told me that propane prices in canada went up 300 percent so now if you use a thousand gallons or 1500 gallons a year of propane let's say that's five dollars a gallon as an extreme that's $7,500 for propane for one heating season. Somebody left me this comment and I went back and I found it. Um, somebody said they have, I think, 1,100 gallons of propane they use in a year to heat multiple buildings and it was five something a gallon. These machines cost 10 grand, which we're gonna get to in the cons. So you can get 25 years out of these machines. So again, that, that's definitely a con is you're not subject to price gouging and availability. Like a, a good friend in Canada said, they're paying over $5 a gallon for propane and they have a couple of big buildings. So yikes, 
Um, anyways, that covers the pros. Let's move into the cons. Okay, folks, let's get into the cons. Uh, con number one is work, time, and labor. You need to find time to um, source the firewood, whether it's on your land or maybe you buy grapple load of firewood or maybe you get it from a tree service or maybe you help a tree service, whatever. And the list goes on and on and on. But you need to find time to source the wood, cut and split and dry the wood for the most part. Uh, so there's time involved in that. However, with the right equipment and right machines, I can probably get all the wood I need for a season and probably a weekend. If you gave me Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, full sun up to sundown with all the right equipment, yeah, you can get some serious work done once you have the system down for sure. Um, but that's a con, is you need time, you need work, time, labor, and energy and effort uh, for firewood. Um, the next con, you need electricity to run these machines. They have pumps. They have a pump on the unit itself and there's a pump inside. It's a push and a pull. And obviously it's dependent on thermostats and everything else um, inside your home. So that is a con where you need electricity. So if the power goes down, I have to have a generator to feed this machine or else we are left in the cold. So that is a con compared to like a wood stove, which will run energy or electricity or not. So again, that is a big con is that these machines run on electricity. Um, Con number three, um, you need equipment, saws, truck, trailer, etc. Um, even if you do have your firewood delivered, you are going to most likely need safety gear, chainsaw chaps, helmet, uh, gloves, chainsaws, not just one, chainsaws. You're definitely going to need multiple chains, oil, um, wood splitters, things like that. So there is upfront cost of equipment but the problem is if you maintain that equipment it'll last you and it'll pay for itself uh, which we're gonna follow up that on we're gonna follow up that point uh, at the very end um, another con is maybe you don't have um, access to wood maybe you're on a weird property where you have to pay for wood now again you are subject to availability when the loggers can come when the tree service can come um, depends on how many jobs they're doing again kind of going back to the oil and propane you are depending on somebody else if you cannot source your own wood on your own land um, another con is you are outside you have to deal with the snow the wind the ice the rain keeping firewood dry shoveling out firewood i've done it all that's why i build sheds i don't deal with tarps anymore i, I touched on that in a few videos as you can see here to my left, uh, I'm pretty sure you can see, I have a daily usage, or not daily usage, weekly usage rack over there that I try to keep stocked. So again, you are going to need, oops, sorry, I tilted the camera there. Oh no, bear with me, only the best production here. So you are going to have to deal with the weather. Um, it gets muddy, it gets slick, it gets icy, especially here in New Hampshire. We have a ton of ice storms, so... You have to deal with that. You are outside. You do not have your wood like under a farmer's porch and you have a month of heat there. You never have to go outside. So that is another con is that you are subject to the elements. Um, another con is upfront cost. These machines we're going to say run about anywhere, any model, any range from eight to $12,000. We're going to give or take. Plus the insulation. You got a trench. You got to get, you got to bury pecs. It's got to be insulated pecs. You get your heat exchangers, you've got your zoning, your permits, your neighbors. There's a ton of stuff that people can contest. Um, these older units do smoke more than the new gasification units. The requirements from what I've seen and when I've talked to the people at the stove shop, um, people are putting in those gasification units in, in places where classics were probably never allowed. So again, that's a con is that you have upfront costs. Same thing with the equipment, the chainsaws. Chainsaws are call it five, $600. The tractors are in the thousands wood splitters are in the thousands so again this again this is upfront cost so it's a con up front but it will pay for itself guaranteed um and another con is and this is one of my last ones is that um it's uh wood boilers generally the older ones they use a decent amount of wood not gonna lie but again you are i'm kind of negating myself going back and forth you are using um you're paying for convenience. You wanna heat two buildings with one heat source? Well, you're gonna use a fair amount of wood to do that. We just have our 3,000 square foot home, which has six heating zones, a floor grid, and our domestic hot water. So that's the only demand that this, this machine can easily run another garage or shop or something. Um, but it's only tied in right now, a single zone to the home. 
So that is uh, one of my last cons is that some of these models use a lot of wood depending on how you burn it, whether it's split or unsplit, uh, which I've touched in a few videos, but that's pretty much my extensive list. So um, I am gonna cover going forward, thank you guys for watching, uh, coming forward, a couple videos I'm gonna do is, would I buy another outdoor wood boiler? I'm gonna talk about wood splitters, um, base, <clears throat> basic firewood kit, stuff like that, and a few other things with this machine. So again, appreciate you guys watching. What time are we at? Um, definitely over 15 minutes, sorry about that. So <laughs> those are my pros and cons. If you're thinking of buying an outdoor boiler, I highly suggest um, you write these notes down, maybe add your own notes. If you think I missed something as a pro or a con, please put it down below in the comments. And also, if you're watching this video, please scroll through the comments. There are a ton of people here in this wood boiler community, uh, community that have been heating longer than I've been alive with these style machines. So their feedback is priceless. So go ahead and read all those comments down below. And those of you who have been heating without their wood boilers, feel free to chime in as I know you will in the comments below. So my name is Jay. Thank you guys for watching. That was my extensive list of pros and cons of an outdoor wood boiler. I hope you guys enjoyed. And like I always say, we will see you out in the woods.